Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today for our Global Tech Exits webinar. We're gonna give everyone just another minute to join and then we'll get started. Thanks. Save the insights. We'll help you to find the next unicorn. We'll help you to see where the smart money is investing. CBinsights.com We'll help you to discover the next hot industry. CB Insights. Okay, everyone. Thanks for waiting. My name is Riley, and I'll be walking you through a few housekeeping items before turning it over to Ben for the presentation. First, don't worry about taking notes, as we'll be sending both the slides and the recording to you right after the webinar. Second, if you have any technical difficulties during the webinar, your best bet is to reach out to the Citrix Help Desk. You can also tweet at us or send an email to webinar at cbinsights.com, and we'll do our best to help. But again, we'll send everything out afterwards, so don't worry too much. Okay, so with all of our webinars, we'll be moving through a lot of data and insights and doing it pretty quickly, but we also wanna make sure that we're answering your questions and keeping this relevant. So throughout the webinar, feel free to ask us questions using the questions tab within GoToWebinar or via Twitter using the hashtag TechExits. And of course, we're CB Insights. Finally, our webinars are different than most because they're rooted in data, not punditry. I doubt that's a surprise given that CB Insights is a data and analytics company. We track every private company in the world and all of the investment and financing activity related to them to help our clients answer questions about major trends, competitor strategy, potential disruptors, and much more. If you're tasked with answering those types of questions and are interested in seeing the platform from which Ben has pulled today's data, just let us know and we'll set up a quick call. Here you can see just a few of our happy customers. Okay, with that, let's introduce Ben and get started on the content. Ben is a research industry analyst here at CB Insights and is focused on fintech, real estate, and much more. His research has been published in dozens of publications, including the New York Times, the Financial Times, Bloomberg, and others that you can see here. He's a graduate from the University of Michigan and has previously worked at Resident Venture Partners. All right, Ben, take it away. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Riley, and thank you, everyone, for joining. Just to outline the agenda, what we're going to cover today in the webinar. First, we'll take a look at exit trends, highlighting the global slowdown in M&A and IPO activity. Then we'll take a look at some geographical trends in some of the continents and countries that have seen substantial exit activity. From there, we'll dig into VC-backed exit trends, highlighting the largest exits and IPOs. Next, we'll break down the VCs and CVCs in the most tech exits, like SV Angel, NEA, Sequoia, and Intel. And finally, we'll end with some sector trends, diving into certain verticals that are seeing a lot of activity recently. So let's get started. Let's begin by taking a look at some global trends. There were more than 1,590 exits in the first half of 2016, a 17% decrease compared to the same period in 2015. And while this year's second quarter was up over Q1, we still see that number significantly lower than last year's Q2. In terms of IPO activity, last quarter had 16 IPOs, five more than the 11 that went public in Q1. Some of the notable IPOs include USV backed Twilio and Verizon Ventures backed NetHealth. In terms of tech exit by valuation, we see that more than 50% of tech companies exit less than 50 million, and 26% exit between 50 million and 200 million based off disclosed valuations. Meanwhile, 4% of tech companies exit for a billion, and that number includes companies like Sitecore, which was bought by EQT Partners, Cruise, which was bought by GM, and Jasper Technologies, which was bought by Cisco. Looking at the funding status of tech companies in the first half of 2016, we see that 72% of tech companies did not raise venture capital, private equity, or growth equity financing before exiting. This is actually less than the number we saw in 2015, which had 75% of exited tech companies not raise financing. This indicates that more companies are raising financing before exit. And we'll be paying attention to this data point as we head through the rest of 2016. 
The U.S. led all countries in exit activity through the first half of 2016, with over 800 tech exits realized. The U.K. was the only country outside the U.S. to realize over 100 tech exits, while countries like India and Canada saw over 80 exits apiece. China, which placed at the seventh spot for a full year 2015 exits report, placed 11th for this year's first half. We'll be paying attention to whether this is a temporary dip or if China exit activity is slowing down in our full year 2016 report. Now let's take a look at sector share globally. What's most telling here is the progressive downward trend of mobile exits, which went from 21% of share in Q215 down to 15% of exit share in this year's second quarter. Conversely, software exits have seen an upward trend increasing from 3% in Q215 to 11% in Q216. Looking at the subset of the top five countries' exit activity by sector share, we see that internet takes the bulk of share across each country. What's most interesting is that mobile took 15% or, 15 or more of share for the U.S., India, and Canada, despite the downward trend globally. And before we continue, we'd like to point out to everyone this report only includes companies that have exited for the first time. So PayPal, for example, was not included despite a second IPO in July 2015. Which was, in, which was within the time frame of this report. If you have any questions regarding this methodology, feel free to re email us at info at cbinsights.com. Now let's get back to the data. Let's dig into some continents and countries where we saw significant exit activity. Taking a look at Europe, we see there was an increase in exit activity in this year's second quarter with 208 acquisitions and three IPOs recorded. This was the first quarter with over 200 M&A deals since Q215, and we see overall activity is up over the last three quarters as well, but still down from last year's second quarter highs. The continent also saw some large acquisitions, including UK-based SwiftKey getting bought by Microsoft for $250 million, as well as Magic Pony Technology, also based in the UK, getting bought by Twitter for $150 million. Next, we take a look at exit activity in Asia. Asian exits increased slightly in this year's second quarter with 90 acquisitions and four IPOs. Activity is still down from the high set in last year's Q2, but is on an upward trend over the last two quarters. And in terms of IPO activity, China and India saw six of the seven IPOs in the first half of 2016. This was the first time we included Australia in the exit report. It's mainly because we saw an uptick in exit activity th this past quarter. In this year's first half, there were 32 M&A exits and six IPOs, including Venture Back, The Search Party, and Redbubble, both going public. Australia has a growing tech ecosystem, with companies like Atlassian and Campaign Monitor becoming stable companies for the land down under. We suspect that Venture Back exit activity will continue to rise in part because venture firms like Airtree, which recently raised the largest Australian venture fund of $250 million, are looking to continue, continuously invest in the Australian tech ecosystem. Finally, when taking a look at ex well, let's take a look at exit activity in the U.S. After dropping to a five-quarter low in Q4-15, U.S. exits are on a slight upward trend of the last two quarters, with Q2-16 notching 429 M&A exits and four IPOs. While this year's first half had a slowdown in activity, we see that there was a slight increase in IPO activity with companies like Twilio, Nat Health, and Acacia all going public in this year's second quarter. And when looking at the state level of activity, it's no surprise seeing California leading the way. What's most impressive is that California realized more than 250 plus tech exits and had more, ex more tech exits than the next five states combined in New York, Texas, Massachusetts, Florida, and Illinois. Another interesting data point is that Texas outpaced Massachusetts in overall exit activity in the first half of 2016. The top 10 states realized more than 20 exits, while the top 20 states also more than 10 exits. Now that we have a global view into exit trends, let's take a look at venture-backed exit activity, where we'll dig into M&A and IPO trends, top exits, and more. First, let's dive into VC-backed trends on a month-by-month -month basis. We see that June had the highest overall month in exit activity in the six-month trend. In terms of IPO activity, we see that May and June saw more IPOs than the first four months combined. 
Additionally, in terms of IPO activity, this past June had the most IPOs since last June in 2015. In this year's first half, 52% of venture-backed tech exits were seed stage startups, up from 25% for the full year of 2015 and 22% in 2014. We'll be, we'll be paying attention to whether this is a temporary uptick or a large jump in 2016 overall. When taking a look at mid-stage activity, we see that almost one-fifth of tech exits came at the mid-stage with companies like TapAd, which exited for $360 million, and TradeKing, which exited for $275 million last raising Series B rounds before exit. 16% of venture-backed companies exited at the Series A stage. Here we see the global VC-backed M&A and IPO trends since the first, first quarter of 2014. Overall, VC-backed exit activity saw a slight increase in this year's second quarter with 161 M&A deals and 8 IPOs, but with the last three quarters trending upwards. However, when looking at the historical trend, we see that Q2-16 still falls below exit activity in Q2-15, which had 179 exits, and Q2-14, which had 174 exits. Additionally, when looking specifically at IPO activity, we see that this past quarter had 8 VC-backed IPOs compared to 14 in last year's second quarter. When looking at the amounts raised by venture-backed tech companies before exit, we see that roughly 60% of VC-backed tech companies raised less than $10 million. Meanwhile, 5% of companies raised $100 million before exit. More specifically, there were 18 companies that raised $100 million before exiting in the first half of 2016. And while some of those companies saw successful exits, like Twilio, Lytix, and Ping Identity, just to name a few, there were a number of companies that sold for less than their total funding raised. For example, One Kings Lane raised $229 million and sold for $30 million to Bed Bath & Beyond while Gilt Group raised $284 million and sold for $250 million to Hudson Bay Company, which is actually the Sa Saks Fifth Avenue parent company. Now let's take a look at the share of VC-backed tech exits by sector. Despite accounting for the largest portion of tech exits, internet activity fell to a five-quarter low this past quarter, accounting for 59% of exit share. Conversely, software exits increased from 3% in last year's Q2 to 10% in this year's first quarter. Mobile exits accounted for 27% of exit share in last quarter as well. In the first half of 2016, there were 30 VC-backed ad sales and marketing exits. Among them were ad tech companies like New York-based StickyAds.tv and Israel-based Interactive, which exited for $100 million and $72 million, respectively. This is an indication that ad the ad tech consolidation is continuing. Here we see perhaps the most interesting slide in the report. The unicorn party looks like it's come to an end with just four unicorn tech companies birthing in this year's second quarter after peaking in last year's Q3 with 23 unicorn births. For the first time in the six quarter trend, we see VC backed billion dollar exits exceed unicorn births in Q216. It'll be interesting to see how this trend continues, as this year's third quarter has already seen high-profile billion-dollar exits in Jet.com for $3.3 billion, Dollar Shave Club for a billion, App11, which was bought today for $1.4 billion, as well as rumors that The Honest Company is going through a sale process for around a billion dollars. The next two slides highlight the top 14 tech exits in the first half of 2016. As we see, the seven largest VC-backed exits were all for more than a billion dollars or more, including digital health company Nat Health, as well as IoT company Jasper Technologies. The top tech exits range from sectors like e-commerce to auto tech. Looking at the next seven companies, we see exits ranging from health tech to cybersecurity. Anecdotally, there's been chatter around the increase in financial buyers entering the tech ecosystem. And using CB Insights data, we see that some of the largest exits were M&A deals completed by private equity firms, including the acquisitions of Sitecore by EQT Partners, Ping Identity by Vista Equity Partners, and Lytix by GTCR. Next, we see the top 26 venture capital-backed exits globally of the first half of 2016. Six of the top 26 were IPOs, including the aforementioned exits of Twilio and Acacia. And I know we breezed through the past few slides quickly, but as a reminder, we'll be sending out the presentation afterwards. Now let's take a look at some investor league tables, highlighting the VCs and CVCs and some of their top exits. 
SV Angel and Lear Hip Adventures round out the first two spots for most tech exits in the first half of 2016. SV Angel was an investor in Cruise and Twilio, while Lair exited companies like Tapad. Bessemer Venture Partners and 500 Startups tied at the number three spot on our list. The date here looks a bit different when we look at investors in the top 100 U.S. tech exits dating back to 2012's fourth quarter, and we see that NEA and Sequoia place in the first two spots. When looking at some of their select exits over the past two years, NEA exited companies like Cleversafe, SolidFire, and Box, while Sequoia exited companies like Jasper Technologies, Square, and OpenDNS. There, there, is, there are a range of well-known investors on this list, including Excel Partners and Klein and Perkins, which place at the fourth and fifth spot. Continuing down the list of venture investors in the top 100 U.S. tech exits, we see that Norwest Venture Partners took the seventh spot with involvement in exits like Apogee, which Google actually just acquired in a public-to-public -public acquisition for roughly $625 million. The rest of the list includes famed venture investor Benchmark Capital, as well as late-stage firm Inside Venture Partners. For a link to a more in-depth analysis of these exits, I've shared the report at the bottom of this page. Here we take a look at the CBCs and corporates with the most tech exits in the first half of 2016. The most impressive data point here is that Intel Capital has been number one on our list for the last four reports. Google Ventures and Salesforce Ventures round out the second and third spot in H116. Some well-known names comprise our top tech acquirers list. IBM was the most active acquirer, buying companies like Resilient Systems and Ustream. Microsoft took the second spot, while J2 Global and Cisco tied for the third. Cisco shelled out an impressive amount of money in this year's first half, paying $1.4 billion for Jasper Technologies, $320 million for Levo Semiconductor, and $260 million for Clicker Technologies, among a couple other exits. Acquisitions, excuse me. Here we see a list of acquirers of billion-dollar tech companies. Since the start of 2013, there have been 11 different tech acquirers who have made a billion-dollar acquisition of a venture-backed U.S. company. However, the makeup of those buyers appears to be shifting, as incumbents across industries ranging from consumer packaged goods to auto are buying venture-backed companies. In July, Unilever's acquisition of Dollar Shave Club marked the fifth billion-dollar acquisition of a U.S.-based VC-backed startup. Unilever was also the fourth non-tech acquirer to buy a venture-backed U.S. company for a billion or more in the, in the year. That's compared to 2014, which when tech, when tech giants including Facebook, Google, and Oracle made up all the acquirers of U.S. venture-backed companies for a billion or more. And those companies included WhatsApp, Nest, Oculus, and Datalogix. Now let's take a look at some sector and industry-level trends like Internet, mobile, and computer hardware, as well as hot categories like auto tech, AI, and digital health. Starting off with historical trends in the internet sector, we see that in this year's first half, there were more than 900 plus M&A exits and 13 IPOs, including Asia-based China Online Education Group and Australia-based Wise Tech Global, both going public. Internet exits declined 14% when compared to the same period in 2015, but are up quarter over quarter through Q2-16. This next chart shows mobile exit trends since Q2 2014. The trend mirrors what we saw in exit share in our global section. Mobile exits are trending downward since peaking in Q2 15 and have declined the last four quarters with the exception of a slight bump up in Q2 16. Mobile exits are down 38% in this year's first half when compared to H1 15. Taking a look at computer hardware, we see that there were over 160 plus computer hardware exits in the first half of 2016. What stands out here is the lack of IPO activity. Not only were there zero IPOs in this year's first half, but over the last two years, there were just four IPOs. Now let's take a look at some of the categories that have seen a lot of attention recently. First, we'll start with digital health exits, which are on track to see more than 150 exits in 2016. And while that number is below 2015 highs, there were still some large exits in the vertical, including the, this year's largest VC-backed exit in Nat Health, which IPO'd at roughly $1.69 billion. The industry saw other large exits as well, such as Bright Tree and OneView. Next, we'll take a look at Auto Tech, which has seen a substantial uptick in exit activity as well, as well as some huge acquisitions in this year's first half. 
2016 is on track to see almost 20 auto tech exits. Among those will include Cruise and Lytix, which were bought for a billion and 500 million, respectively. The auto tech industry is seeing large exits, and while we don't include Q3 in this report, it's worth noting Uber's acquisition of auto for around 700 million this past August. Lastly, we'll dig into exits in artificial intelligence. This year has already seen 26 exits and is on track for a record-setting year in 2016. Google, Apple, IBM, Salesforce, and many others have made acquisitions in the space over the last two years. Well, that's all I prepared for you today. Thanks again for listening. We'll be fielding questions offline on Twitter if you use the tech exits hashtag. And if you want to find me, my handle is at Benjamin Waxman or shoot me an email at the address listed in the presentation. Again, we'll send out the slide deck and webinar recording at the end of the presentation, which you can revisit. Thanks again for listening.